Welcome to George Call Fine Art. Here, the viewer is encouraged to get outside and paint from life. George's job is to provide the tools to solve the many technical challenges faced in rendering landscape paintings. View the library of landscape paintings offered and become a subscriber. You can also purchase tutorial videos plus original tutorial and studio paintings. Thank you, and if you like what you see, click the subscribe button and join in on the fun. Hello and welcome to a new three-part series titled Timber Brook. Yes, I came up with a name. <sighs> I'm bad on names. Okay, Timber Brook three-part series. This is part one, which is blocking. So what I almost did was cover the whole canvas in thin value colors. So uh, I go through that step by step showing you my mixtures and brushes I use and um, I'll kind of show you some of the ins and outs of composition. So, it looks like it's going to be a fun new painting. I think it's going to be a difficult painting too. It's not easy. It's kind of like you're in a jungle. It's not a foreground, middle ground, background. So, uh, try not to be intimidated by these difficulties like I get sometimes. But, uh, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. Keep painting. All right, let's get started. Hello and welcome to part one of, I don't know, Fallen Timbers or something. I'll come up with a, a good name here for this. But anyway, I'm George Call. This is part one of a new three-part series. You can see on your upper left-hand corner as we get started here that um, we've got a stream with a lot of timber in it and a lot of vertical, you know, pine trees. And this is up in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. But uh, this is not an easy, easy one. You know, it's not a like foreground, middle ground, background. This is kind of like uh, almost jungle where everything's right up close to you. So, where do you get started in something like this? And uh, what I tried not to do is get intimidated by these things and it's just like when you have a heavy schedule during your day you go what am I you know how am I going to get all this done and if you look at it like that it's going to be on your mind and heavy and you'll be anxious but uh, what I do is um, do the first things first and then um, what, uh, what occurs next is the next thing to do so um, the thing I want to do is just uh, Find a brush here, okay. I'm working on a 12 by 16, by the way, a little bit bigger than I normally do for, a, you know, a video, but um, I'm a little crazy to do this. But uh, So I'm gonna uh, mix some um, ultra blue and yellow ochre. Throw some maples in there also. Just a gnar kind of a gnarly gray green, I guess, I don't know. And what I see is that the stream goes back to a vanishing point, and I'm going to make that a little to the right of upper center. And I'm going to build from there. So up there, there's a little horizontal, and then some darks here, here. And there's going to be light in between these two lines here. And from there, things kind of descend down to a big dark, it's like a dark right here, big dark, and there's another dark coming about mid-painting right here, and then over here is the big dark, I think he needs to go over here a little bit more, he has to be moved over to the right a little bit. And then Big Dark comes in here. With some big verticals there. So, you know, that works. Just trying to map out my canvas here a little bit. So if I start here and start doing really fine drawings of to where everything should be, it may be in the wrong place. I find it easier for me. 
and I want to encourage you to at least think this way, to try to figure out where the big shapes are going to be. And then stand back and see if all that works. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of darks that are in this area. Coming away from that vanishing point. There's a bank here. And then down here, there's, there's a dark in here. I'm going to see, I get back a lot because I want to try to judge these shapes to see if they're in the right place. So let me do a little fine tuning here because I see a shadow right here. I see a bigger shadow right in this area. I better get some gamsol on my brush. Just putting it on. This is, you know, this is a time for thin paints, not thick paints. Okay. Checking my camera to make sure everything's working right. And now I'm going to. They're kind of like groupings of darks, I think, in here. Oops. Secure your canvas. Get in there. What is your problem? It's always discouraging when you're painting and you're on the left side of your painting, painting, and boom, it falls into your palette. It's so embarrassing, particularly if you do it on camera. That's why they invented editing. So now, and I think these darks kind of connect up here. Okay, let's work on these dark patterns on the right. So the darker darks are a little bit above and below. Now, let's go down in this area here. Looks like it's going downhill, so let's level things. We can go this way, level them up, so the viewer isn't kind of turning right when they look at it. These look okay. So I made this a little low on the left, so let me just get my gamsol on a rag and Move it up just a little bit. I can see I'm doing this to kind of keep my paints thin. All right, so now we have really interesting darks on the bottom. So let's go with some blue, viridian, transparent oxide red or burnt sienna, something dark and brown. And I think what we want to do is draw some logs on the bottom here. So some of them, just try to figure out where the dark side of this stuff is. I guess we have a shadow that goes out even farther over in here. So we want to have this go to maybe in here, and another one right next to it, and then another big honker, like right here that goes back into this neighborhood. And we have a dark that goes between them and over them. Okay, back to blue. Burnt Sienna, Viridian, Ultra Blue, Burnt Sienna. Now we have some guys that come out from here to about here. And another one that's a little higher up in here. And then we have one horizontal all the way across right in here. And a couple little guys that go into here, 
little guy down here and then another horizontal up in this area. guys up here. And I need a dark underneath. This guy needs to be, I have a log here, a bit dark here, and I need a dark on this side. Oh my goodness. This is taxing. All right, so what do we do next? So let's move and really define these canopies with a darker value. So I'm switching off my, I was, oh, I'm, I was using the number four rosemary uh, 2025, kind of a stiff old thing. You can see it's all worn out and almost turned into a filbert. It was a flat at one time. All right, so I'm going to get something uh, that's a little stiff. Stiff, another 2025, but this is a number six. It's got some volume to it. And I'm going to mix some paint up. So let's go back to blue. 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 Viridium. I used to just have... This is that student grade uh, Winton, which... As student grades go, I, I used to just paint with student grades back in the day, but um, I've you know moved on to maybe a little bit higher stuff with more pigment in it. But still, this old uh, Winton um, Viridian is really good. Let me get some brown in here. Brown. You can use transparent oxide red. You can use burnt sienna. Just get a pile of it. Because we're going to need it. Remember, we want to go in thin in part one. Thin pants. So they don't have to be gooping on there. No gooping. Okay. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of cam salt in this thing. Uh, number six, because it was stiff. It hasn't been used since last Thursday. And now I'm starting to come in with my, see I'm using the side of my brush. I'm not using the end of it. The end of it doesn't hold a lot of paint. Now if you want to use the end of it, maybe good for trunks, okay? Like that. But I want to use browns for that, but anyway. Don't get ahead of yourself. Watch me. And you can see the value is really making a big difference coming in with a darker value. And this dark kind of goes back toward the vanishing point that we started with up in here. I think there's another area here that's a little, not quite as dark, but a little bit of dark right in here. But this is real bright in, in this area. All right, let's keep going. And over here is a pretty nice stand of dark trees. And 
then here, this dark is pretty, pretty well making a statement too. much connect back there it seems like to me. Let me get back and see how we're doing. I better check my time. Ooh -ooh. Okay. Time, time, time. Oh. We're halfway through already. We better stop dilly-dallying. Now, I'm not a slave to the reference. If there's something in the reference I don't want, or I want more of, I do it. I use the reference for uh, helping me with values and value colors. I think there's a bank in here with some darks here and a little log here. some darks under him. Alright, too much light coming through up here. I'm just going to put some really light darks in here in the vanishing area. Wow, it's a lot of hunking darks in this thing. Jeez. At this point, he's saying, did he choose the right, the, the right reference? I hope so. We'll make that judgment on part three. Don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, and there's going to be kind of a, a pine tree and light right in here somewhere. But we will put some darks under him. What I think... One of the assignments I want to give myself, it's not so much a challenge, but um, I need to tell more of the story of what's going on in the darks. I mean, there's a lot of darks here, and uh, I'm just going to smash some of the darks, and if there's a big pile of it, I'll pick it up. There's a big hunk of it. Oh. Just smashing my palette knife against it and picking up anything that's too thick. All right. Now let's move on to our logs. So I'm going to clean some of the dark out of here on number six, but I still think I can use it for the next step. But I want to get these darts over to the side. So one thing I know that's going to be difficult to get to are the tr subtle trees in here. And I hope you do that for your homework. I'll try to show you how to do these vertical pine trees in the next few minutes, which is 12 minutes and 18 seconds. Okay, so uh, let's make a mixture. So it has something to do with yellow ochre. So that means white. You know, I could probably use maples and yellow ochre. More naples, more naples, more naples. My naples is a little stiff because it's it was left over from Thursday, but when I tested it this morning, it seemed pretty good. Lighter, lighter, get a little yellow in there too. I'm using lemon yellow. All right, 
right, let's see what this does. That's a good watercolor. I want a, I want a trunk color. So let's go with brown. White. I think this is a burnt sienna. Cad yellow medium. A little bit more red in here. This is a lizard. Just a little bit. I'm not making enough product on it. Let me get some. I want to try to. I'm going to use a smaller brush for the. It's a number 42025. So it's the softer stuff. Or I mean the harder stuff. And I know the reference doesn't help you much with. Remember the lights on top of the dark. Okay. Not too complicated there. This has to be bigger. Seems that it's got a hump in it. It's not good to have a hump. Little guy there. I missed some of these guys coming off of here. Didn't put a dark underneath it. Put this at a slightly different angle than the one above it. Because that's what nature is telling us to do. Well, that was a missed shot. Come on. Here we go. And here we go. Right in here. I just turned the brush over. And again, I'm not using the end so much as I'm getting the paint off the side of this brush. And I need to maybe... This this way, these are bigger guys here. Logs. And this is a fat boy right here. Right here. And he goes through here into here somehow. Got a crooked log. Come on now. Whew! Okay, logs are in. Let's go to Water. So I made this Naples color here. Naples. I'm going to add a little Viridian to it. Viridian. Viridian. And let's see what it does. Ooh, that's pretty. My gosh, I think I got a winner right off. Goop. Got a lot of goop. Put it in here. And we just have a little bit coming through here. And here. And here. And a little bit in here. Color. Let's get a little bit back in here. A little bit. All right. I want to work on top of it, so keep her thin. Smash her down. Not bad. I'm going to move this off to the side. And I think I have 6 minutes and 42 seconds. I can work on the banks. It's wonderful. So I think it has something to do with permanent green or some sort of a light green. So, let's see what I got in the way of light green. 
Um, I'm going to use emerald. It's nice and pretty. When you want an ice cream. If that doesn't work, I'm going to use permanent green, which is a great standby for all kinds of light greens, bright greens. I'm trying to get the lid on these old guys that I've been using for a few months. It's, it's covered in paint. It's hard to get it back on. So uh, let's get some emerald out here. That's a two green. So we're going to throw some yellow ochre in it and some white and some yellow. Cad yellow medium. Cad yellow medium. That's getting in the neighborhood. Cad yellow medium. White. And I am going to go back to something I haven't used today, and that is a 279. It's a soft brush. It's a Marion uh, Rosemary Long Flat. Number four. Quadro. Okay. Green. Get some green here. Green. Green. And we got some hunk of greens we need up in here. Green. And, oh man, I need to get some greens down here. I made the water a little too big back there. And here, green. Greens go up in here. Here, I think. I'm a little too, too free with my greens. And I'm going to add some of this dark color, this green, add some viridian. Viridian, whatever this dark was we used before. A little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to make some darker greens up in here. And here. Here. All right, I said if um, what I want you to do off camera is work on these vertical trunks. So, with the remaining minutes, three minutes, let's get that mixture in. So, let's go with some yellow ochre. Throw some dark in there. And some burnt sienna. A little bit of light now. I think that would be a nice starting point for trunks. I think I need a little bit more of this. Let me get a little red in there. A lizard. And with a, I'm trying to find the perfect brush. And this is a, a number four two seven nine. So it's a soft brush, Marion Long Flat, Rosemary. I mean. And to loosen it up a little bit, I had to put some Gamsol. It was a little stiff this brush, and I need a few verticals. Reload. Give me a double. Double trunks. Give me some more of this right next to it with just a little bit of variation in there. And now over here we need some big guys coming through. Come on, where is it? That's my shadow. So let's bring him up through here. Reload, I didn't have enough on it. 
load these babies up. Okay, little guys here. And let's go to a smaller brush now for the background trees. So you're getting an idea of my mixture and how I'm applying it. I'm using a softer brush to go over the existing paint because it, it won't disturb the paint underneath it as much as a stiff brush would. But it still will disturb it. Okay, let's get going here until that dinger scares the crap out of me. Okay, let's get... And I think we need one right up in here. It's too thick. Jeez, thin it down. Slow, there we go. Slow it down. Get a little game saw in there. Oh, there's that darn thing. Okay, that brings us to the end of our session. So you've got an idea of what to do for homework. And uh, can't wait to get into part two with you. All right. Thanks very much. I'll see you in part two.